Hi, and welcome to SEO Hangouts with Josh Brzezinski and Matt Cutts over there, meowing his head off. Um, today I have some very interesting uh, leaks from John Mueller, uh, a whole cavalcade of leaks from John Mueller actually in two separate Hangouts, which were just nuts. Uh, nuts in the sense of what's changing in SEO uh, and uh, what we're finding out about now. So uh, some really big, uh, interesting ones uh, this week, so um, I'll get right to it. Okay, so the first Hangout uh, I'm talking about was on February the 14th on Valentine's Day. John Mueller sent us some of his love, some SEO leaky love goodness, or we had to pry it from him like a hungry, a hungry cranky baby. Um, so there's a bunch of just little ones that are important maybe to some people and then they kind of add up by the end to kind of get to a point. So bear with me, I'm going to go through them pretty quickly. So the first one he said is that if you have new content daily, you want to make sure that they're spidering it consistently or increasing, increasingly. Uh, and you also want to watch the latency of the server and the time it takes to download a page. Um, that's important because if you're adding content daily, they should be spidering it daily. They should be spidering it or at least on a regular basis. And he said if they're not spidering it on a regular basis, then this is a problem, uh, uh, actually a panda quality problem is, is actually the issue. Uh, that's a good indication that you have a panda quality problem. Um, the next thing he mentioned is uh, if you're, they've been talking about serving HTTPS as opposed to the, the secure socket layer HTTP as opposed to HTTP normal, um, default, uh, traditional, old school, HTTP old school. Um, the issue there though is that if you, uh, he said you have to have, have a robot's text for each version of the site, the HTTPS version and the HTTP version. He says if you don't, then they'll use the, the robot's text for the HTTP version. Uh, uh, and if it doesn't stop them from crawling the HTTPS, then they will crawl the HTTPS, and then you will have duplicate content issues. However, it's not necessarily an issue, and if that's the only thing wrong with your site, you don't even have to worry about it. Uh, it's, it's, it's like such a minor thing. It's like having a cold for a day. You know, for a regular human being, that's not a problem. Um, it's for someone who's already sick that it can be a problem, right? So um, in the same way, um, Google will automatically just concatenate those pages as they will for index pages. So for example, uh, John Miller didn't really get into this too much on this Hangout, but he's mentioned it before, and, and I've done, Google members have mentioned this for years. This hasn't worked for years. That for example, let's say you have HTTPS colon slash slash redapples.com slash whatever, and HTTP colon slash slash redapples.com. If you save the same, con same content on both those different URLs, Google will just assume uh, they're the same content and pick the version they like the most, and that'll be your canonical version. That's going to come up to be very important in a, in a couple seconds. So um, the next thing he mentioned, uh, again, it's just kind of a, a random potpourri of things. Um, if you disavow the links, uh, then they're not counted towards your site, good or bad. Uh, John Mueller wanted to remind us that the disavow file works, just as I ranted two weeks ago. Um, and also, he mentioned in that particular Hangout, if you remove the links from the disavow file, then the links are counted again. So he was asked, what happens if I take those links out of the file? Do you remember uh, that we disavowed them? And the answer is no. The disavow file works like a robot's text file. If you remove the, uh, the, the entries out of the file, then Google no longer counts them anymore. So if you remove the links from the disavow file, then the link juice should be counted again for your site, either positively or negatively, unless Google has used its machine learning to learn what sites they are, think are suspect and no longer count those anyway for you or for anybody else because you put them in just about file. And they also use that for machine learning as to what people think are suspect. Um, okay, and the next one. Um, he mentioned, and this is very important, he's mentioned this before, uh, but it's good to mention again. Don't use HTML sitemaps or don't have large pages with just a bunch of links on them. He said this is ignored at best and spam, considered spammy at worst. It's probably considered a spammy or non-trust or a non-quality factor in that big long list of good and bad factors for Panda. It's probably a check mark in the bad column. Uh, it probably also will be stuffed with keyword stuffing and very well could make it look like you're selling links or something along those lines. So don't do it. It's not good for your SEO rankings. Okay, the next one is um, 
going to be disappointing for some X Rumor and or some Linkers or for some uh, Scrape Boxers, maybe SE Nukers even. Um, but uh, Mueller mentioned that although they will read uh, links in any kind of file, an Excel file, a PDF file, you know, whatnot, but they will not follow them uh, and, and assign link juice to the link unless it's a proper anchor tag in HTML. So they will find a link in XML, they'll find a link in in uh, in PDFs, but they will, all those links will be no follow. They'll still crawl them, but they won't assign any link juice to them. They only will and they only can assign link juice to proper anchor tags in their algorithm. Uh, so keep that in mind. Not that no follow links are totally useless. Um, they are definitely useful if Google is still having trouble figuring out what your page is about. Um, but otherwise, they don't pass juice at all. They're not going to help it rank higher. They're going to help it rank at a certain point. They're not going to help it rank higher. You can point as many no follow links as you want. It's not, you're not going to move the ranking of the site higher. Okay, and next, second last thing for this particular Hangout. Um, he mentioned the click-through rate again. He was Someone directly asked him, do you guys track click-through rate from your Google SERP page to the page and then bounce back? And of course, when you directly ask him, he has to say no. He has to deny it, although he's he is admitted it before in, in other, other lazy hangouts where there's hardly anybody there in the summer. Um, uh, but this, so he denied it, he, but he strongly implied yes. So it, it's, it's, it's kind of a quizzical thing he does, but he's done this many times. He said, oh, it's hard for us to do, uh, but we do do it uh, on the big picture level, quote unquote. So he admits they do it. And he said it's hard to do on the site level, but you notice he did not say it was impossible, and he did not say they do not do it. He just said it's hard to do at the site level. Um, but he's already mentioned before, and they mentioned the book In the Plex. The, the title is called In the Plex, uh, um, that they do do this click-through analysis. And uh, he has mentioned before that it is part of their quality algorithms. He's mentioned before whenever he talks about quality algorithms, he means Panda. So he has mentioned before that it's a trigger in Panda. Uh, pretty directly, he's mentioned this before. So and we've also, we've also found out from doing our own SEO experiments that it definitely uh, has to do with your quality and your rankings. Uh, this, this, uh, this, this, the click-through rate from the SERP page to the web page and back. Okay, last but not least for this particular hangout, and I'll get to the next one, which gets even crazier. And I'll build off this point is that he mentioned that they, by the way, they will straight out ignore your 301s. Uh, the 301 is are treated as a 302. The 301 is supposed to be a directive. It's supposed to be something that Google follows pretty religiously. It's supposed to be one of the more immutable laws of SEO physics. Uh, but he, he said they'll, they'll ignore it. They'll ignore it if they want to. Uh, he said they will follow up to, up to five redirects and no more. And if you're, if you're forwarding uh, page A to page B, um, if they like page A better because it has more links or better usage or, or better content for whatever reason, they'll select this even if you have a 301 here, uh, it can have better content I guess, it would be 301ing. I suppose it could. But if it has better links, for example, they'll select this page instead of this page if uh, it's a cross-domain 301 or they don't like the 301 for whatever reason. So uh, keep that in mind that if, um, uh, if, if it looks nicer in the SERPs, quote-unquote, is what they said, is what John Miller said. So keep that in mind that if they're not uh, respecting your 301, it could be because there's quality issues with, with the target page and uh, and as compared to the the originator page. And so building on that point, we'll move on to his hangout he had February 24th. Now February 24th, he had a site clinic. And yet there was some major leaks he leaked out in this site clinic, so I want to get to this right away. After a slight break for fermented tea. Um, so here's the first one from uh, February 24th. Uh, he leaked a, a major, a couple major things about Panda in this hangout. Uh, the first one he leaked is that they do use internal metrics as part of Panda. I've long speculated that they do or that this would be good for them to use. They probably do. And he leaked at least one aspect that they do use internal usage metrics as part of Panda. He uh, strongly implied that if uh, a user uh, goes to the SERPs, goes to your page, like your landing page, and clicks on another ad and leaves your site right away, he strongly implied that this would be bad, a bad quality signal uh, for Panda. Uh, he said, and then he said this, and this was extremely fascinating that he said this as well. 
He said, you have to have your site optimized for maximal usage and maximal sharing before sending traffic to it of any kind. Of any kind. I repeat. He said, you have to have your site optimized for maximal usage and maximal sharing before sending traffic to it of any kind. So this was fascinating. Um, this implies that uh, they may also watch paid traffic as well. And this was in the context of this usage metrics discussion and how it was bad, a bad quality signal. Um, so this implies directly that they might also use paid traffic uh, uh, in terms of the bounce rate or the, the internal click-through rates for paid traffic as well for Pandora for their quality algorithms, although he previously denied that in, in previous Hangouts, or at least it seems like he denied it. Uh, I asked him point blank once if, they, uh, if the only traffic we have to worry about for Panda was organic traffic. And he said, yes, that's the, only Panda, that's the only traffic you have to worry about for your usage metrics and whatnot. And then, of course, he added the caveat, we do not use anything like the analytics bounce rate. But we know they're using some kind of, uh, you just admitted they're using some kind of internal click-through rates and things like that. So, so yes, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not, uh, peeking into your analytics if you have it installed and using that. Obviously, that's what he's saying. But that doesn't mean they're not using some kind of bounce rate, just not the analytics bounce rate, the Google Analytics bounce rate from their Google Analytics TM product, right? Um, so this is fascinating, um, the implications of this. Not only that, um, paid traffic that bounces, could get you in hot water for Panda, um, and so basically from now on, um, I'm going to take it as as a risk mitigation strategy to watch that traffic to make sure that it is responding really well for a number of reasons, not the least of which is you want the best bang for your buck for your your uh, paid campaign, but also now apparently it might also get you in hot water for your organic uh, efforts as well. But not only that, but it seems that the 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 new site honeymoon, which he's going to mention later on as well, seems to we, uh, people have already you know long uh, uh, noticed this. Uh, the new site honeymoon, the new site seem to get ranked, and then for a few months, and then they go away. Um, uh, later on, John Mueller is going to admit that they do have a new site uh, honeymoon. Uh, it's like a um, uh, split test for them, and they're doing they're doing uh, comparison A/B testing to see if the new site com uh, performs as well in terms of usage. In terms of usage metrics, it performs as well as the other competing options that they have there. And he, he's fully admitted that before. So there's another a way that we know that they use usage metrics. So um, it, it, it implies that that kind of, of algorithm might put your, your site into a kind of category based on the usage and the sharing it gets. And not only the usage, but the sharing. He specifically mentioned sharing. And whenever he's mentioned sharing before, he's talking about social sharing uh, for the most part. So people sharing it on social, retweeting it on social, uh, reposting it, plus wanting it, you know, those kinds of things. Uh, usually in the context of, they, they don't want to mention Google+, but they, they really mean Google+, but they also mention uh, Twitter and things like that. So that seems to mean that they want some kind of social proof. They want to extend their third-party recommendations not only to social in general, but I mean in the specific sense that when a new site comes up, they want to see people sharing it, otherwise it's no good. Or they put you in a sort of trust category with this, a lot of people shared it, we're going to trust it. Hardly anybody shared it, we don't know sure if we should trust it. Or nobody shared it and it's stuck with keywords, we're not going to trust it at all, and suddenly you have a higher chance of being hit by Panda, higher chance of being hit by Penguin. You know, it's... It seems like it works like this. You know, I've, been, I've been speculating about these algorithms, and John Mueller has been leaking bits about these algorithms, how they have kind of algorithms that, algorithms that rank you, algorithms that are just for trust, and algorithms that de-rank you. And however well you do here will, will show however well you're going to do up going this way or going down this way. Also, he, uh, there's another major leak for Panda. He also further implied strongly that for four pages, 500 level error pages, site errors, server response error pages, garbage pages. This is all going to be a quality factor in Panda, especially if it shows up on the index page. This includes PHP errors, MySQL errors as to the full page or part of the page or parked pages. Um, all of these kinds of error messages are all uh, part of Panda. Remember, there's a giant checklist, as far as I can tell, of good factors and bad factors. There's going to be some major check marks in the bad factor column, obviously. So you don't want to have any uh, errors on your, on your site. 
not even for no longer than a 48-hour period, that's for sure. Uh, all the testing that I've done seems to indicate anything longer than a 48-hour period, and that's when you start to have some trouble. Okay, and that kind of uh, dovetails into this extra leak that he gave us. And this extra leak is kind of an example of this point, is that Google is machine learning. Google is alive. It is Skynet, right? It is thinking. Google probably is as smart right now as probably a three- or four-year-old kid. Um, everything in Google is machine learning, and that means everything is a statistical analysis. And because everything is a statistical analysis, you know, if they have this many links with this much anchor text pointing at this page at, at this time with this many people, you know, and with this much track or, or not, you know, all that kind of Bayesian filter, that statistical analysis, uh, then they'll take an action. And the action they will take is, is directly not a black and white binary, at least most of the time, it looks like more and more it's a statistically uh, proportionate response based on the, 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 the statistical analysis of the risk or the, the suspicion of what they found. And so here's a point that he leaked that, that illustrates that beautifully. For example, geotargeting. You would imagine that geotargeting is a binary, right? Either, you know, redapples.fr is, is probably supposed to be completely relevant to France or not. Right, um, but uh, but not in this case. Even geolocation for them, even the geolocation algorithms he mentioned work on a partial best guess basis. Uh, again, their geolocation algorithms, even their geolocation algorithms, which you would think should be a pretty strong signal, just like the Dirt 301 directive, um, is worked on a partial best guess basis. And so he explained how that means that even if you have a .com or even a .co.uk depending on the location's uh, specificity of your content, what your content talks about, what um, uh, abbreviations it uses, what, what money you, uh, signatures it uses, etc. And if you don't have a, an a hreflang set up, uh, it might not fully rank you for that area. Um, so even the geolocation, even if you bought a .ca uh, and then there's no other signal, it's only proportional that they think that you're probably relevant for Canada. You have to set up an HRF lane and or the webmaster tools to say, I am relevant for Canada. Those are the, the stronger signals. Um, but even then, it's not a fully, uh, he, he talked about how it's not a fully black and white issue and it's still proportional. Um, and they will still, uh, based on quality and trust and authority factors, decide whether or not you're relevant, relevant for Canadian searchers or any other searchers or searchers at all. So everything is, so remember, Google, is completely arrogant and everything is machine learning based. All the previous directives are now just suggestions for them and they're going to decide when they're going to go trust it or not. And so um, uh, keep that in mind when you're doing your SEO is that everything is proportional based, everything is using the statistical model, everything is using machine learning. And as Matt Cutts' recent video, which I'm going to cover in detail in a future hangout, because it was golden, by the way, it's got like 60 views, nobody watched it because it was talking about some programming languages they used in the back end, some tools they made, but that was gold. That was the video you should be watching. And I'm going to cover it uh, in, a, in a future video, but just suffice, suffice to say for now, if you've watched that video, if you're one of the 60, if, you, if, you're, the, if you're one of the other 59 who watched it, uh, you know very well that their programming tools and machine learning is getting crazy, stupid advanced. Uh, and so um, that's what they're using uh, to rank everything these days. And they can more, more or less do this on the fly. Okay, however, uh, to quash maybe some of that enthusiasm regarding their machine learning and what, their, what data they're mining, to be precise, uh, for the conspiracy theorists out there, John Mueller did state um, uh, that you have to supply a Google spreadsheet that is public. Otherwise, the manual web, spam, web spam team can't get access uh, when you're doing a reconsideration request and giving them a, a sheet of links that you've deleted or, or dis disavowed. It has to be set to public, otherwise the manual web spam team can't get access to it. This further reinforces the legal and perhaps even the internal political problems that Google employees have, that they cannot get into your webmaster tools or they cannot access your Google Analytics, at least not with uh, extra effort that, at the very least, we know the web spam team doesn't have. Because John Mueller wouldn't say that if the web spam team could get could access, if they were allowed internally to get access, uh, to, or if they have the technical capability internally to get access, 
to your uh, Google Analytics or your Google account. Because remember, it's all under one Google account. If they can access your analytics, they can access anything and everything. And that would be against their terms of service. Um, of course, there is a current lawsuit in, I believe, a Florida court that Google has done just that for years, trying to find uh, paid linkers. And, uh, and Matt's cuts information about the Dremel tool uh, would literally drill down into large data sets, just like Google Analytics, to find paid linkers, people buying and selling links through Gmail. Uh, but again, it would still violate their terms of service, and still it looks like it to be an internal uh, political issue that they don't want to allow. Uh, unless John Mueller is being extra sneaky, but but he's, he shouldn't play poker. I can pretty much tell when he's lying or when he's trying to be sneaky. Uh, he's much he's much worse at it than Matt Cutts, anyway, in my opinion. Okay. Okay. So here's another major leak regarding uh, review snippets. Um, John Mueller implied uh, uh, essentially his implications uh, um, kind of. Uh, reinforced a suspicion that we've had for a while now, ever since XMS West last year, which was about a year ago. I'm going to XMS West in just a couple days. Um, that the review snippet uh, is both a quality factor uh, and, uh, or rather having one, not having one, sorry, not having a, a review snippet is a lack of quality signal, which was what was implied. And also a way to share the site because it will show up on Google Plus or some other social network quite often. And so um, keep in mind, the review snippet is not only just for the click-through way to people seeing the stars and clicking through, it is also a quality, he implied it was a quality signal unto itself, if you have one and have good reviews, and that it was also a way to share the site. Um, he was probably referring to Google+, Plus, but if you have the review snippet that's tied into any other kind of network like Yelp or whatever else. Uh, so these are all good signals, he said. He said, and they will read all these signals. Um, so that implies again that they're reading other social networks, uh, which again is more proof that they're doing so. Um, we've had lots of other leaks; they are, are already doing so. There's plenty of social networks that I directly admit they give direct OAuth uh, backend access to Google already, like Disquis and Reddit. Um, they bought Zagat, of course. Um, and uh, that the, the, the reviews are a quality signal in and of itself. I don't know if it's used in, in Panda checklists or if it's used in some other kind of ranking algorithm. I suspect probably in the Panda checklist because uh, that would make the most sense. Okay, now, so the next one, they just get better and better. Um, he, so for clone sites, so this has been going on and Barry made a big deal out of this. Barry asked a question about it and then there was all, some more information about it. So what are clone sites? Clone sites are when you have redlockers.com, bluelockers.com, greenlockers.com, uh, you know, or you have sites that are same design and same content or virtually identical on very similar topics and you're just trying to rank for keywords. It used to be a favorite tactic. Uh, it still works to some degree as long as they don't, they don't detect the clone sites. So you can't make them clones. They have to be, you know, you can use exact match domains. They, they still work. Quite well, in fact. Um, the the exact match domain .com and two of my test serps is outperforming everything else uh, as long as they trust it. Uh, and the percentage chance of getting hit by Panda and and Penguin increases because you have those exact match keywords in your your uh, URL. But still, if you can beat the quality and you can fake out with the links, or you just have nothing but uh, a non-exact match links pointing at you. Um, or non-search phrase anchor text pointing at you, exact match domains still, still seem to be the way to go right now. At least in two of my test serps it is. Um, but if you're doing this clone site strategy, you have to be very careful. Because he mentioned that if they can detect, and remember, their machine learning is getting crazy good. If they can detect that blue lockers and red lockers and green lockers has all the same content, more or less, and has the same domain or on the same set of IP addresses or registered by the same person, then he says this is, and I quote, a trust problem for the main site and the other sites. So they, they will automatically determine what your main site is supposed to be, and that's the one probably with the most links you spend the most time on or things like that. I'll get to that a little bit in a second. Um, and then they will just concatenate all that ranking automatically. They will auto-choose a 301 for you. And that's uh, the, the second piece that Barry was making such a big deal about, is that all, that also counts, that algorithm also works for older sites in the index and newer sites in the index. 
So let's say you had redapples.com and let's say it was hit by Penguin. And so you deleted it and you registered redapples.net and just ported it over exact clone. They will, John Mueller admitted that although the algorithm doesn't always work, he said, we will help you out. <laughs> we will help you by doing an automatic 301 from the old site to the new site because it's just a complete exact clone. And so we will forward all the signals, good or bad, they will forward all the signals. I repeat that if they still have Penguin hit site in the index and you clone it to new URL, try and get away from it, or manual or manual penalty or whatever else it will hit you here. If that site hasn't fully been pulled out of their index yet, um, and that might never happen, by the way, it could take months for it to pull out, pull out of their index because their ranking index is not their historical index. They're two different indexes, indices, indexes, indices. Indexes, whatever, I don't know, whatever the plural is. Indexification in this, this, this. How's that for a made-up word on Friday? Um, so it can take months for it to get out of their, their historical index, if, if ever. I don't even know if they any de ever delete it. So keep in mind, the ranking index is not their historical index. So I don't know how long it would take for it to get out, for this site to get out of their historical index, but I am hypothesizing that you might be able to get around this if it does get out, or just make this site completely different. It can't be a clone of this site. Uh, different page structure, different content, different design. Or at the very least, different page structure, different content. Um, and try and rank for different keywords on the page. Then it, essentially it's a different site, a completely new site, and they won't do an automatic 301. If you want them to do an automatic 301, don't rely on their automatic 301 and just do a 301 page, a page level 301 anyway. And P.S. Avoid doing a site move if you can ever avoid it because they screw up. They try and think, did you do this right? They try and get in there and they often screw up. I've seen people do 301s and not get their rankings back for six months, uh, even though they did it perfectly correctly. Uh, the perfect correct way, by the way, is a page level 301 to page level and then a, a site move request in Webmaster Tools. If you're lucky, it'll only be deranked for a day or two. Uh, but be, so be wary of that. So anyway, getting back to the point. Is that clone sites are an issue? Um, if whether they're in the index current, the, the ranking index currently or not, they can tell Red Locker from Green Locker from Blue Locker. They can tell John Mueller claims what the main site is. They're supposed to be the one that they all point to, uh, the one that all the, the most links point to, the one that has the most usage and traffic, the one that has the most uh, uh, attention from yourself. He strongly implied they can pay attention to uh, how many, how much you're editing it, how often you edit it, how often it's updated. Um, so we knew that they used that for query deserves diversity uh, algorithms, uh, sorry, query deserves freshness algorithms, the speed algorithms, uh, the, the freshness algorithms, but we weren't sure they were using that for quality. It looks like they now are, by the way. So that's another major leak that he had in this hangout. Um, and it also includes, uh, which Barry Schwartz made a big deal out of, that uh, even if you try and delete your domain and say, okay, forget it, I'm sorry, Google, I delete my domain, I'm just going to start fresh, they will help you out by, they, they will possibly help you out by forwarding the old signals to the new, even if they're bad. And Barry tried to get him to confirm, so you're going to forward the penalty too? And he, he hummed in hot and didn't give a direct answer, but the answer is yes. The answer is, uh, watch the video yourself, the answer is, an unqual that's what Barry Schwartz thinks the answer is, and I agree 100% with him. The answer was an unqualified yes. Whatever signals are there, we will forward, meaning the bad signals too. Uh, so those, uh, and he did mention in other Hangouts that spammers, they don't want to let spammers get away with, with just starting a new new domain because um, they're a bunch of pricks. So um, that's the clone site leak. Now let me see in just a couple of minutes. Is there anything else I can mention? Um, yes. So if the uh, same website clones to a new domain, they will forward all the signals. Uh, and he said yes. And if one of the quality factors they're taking a look at is whether or not, and I quote, you also spend a lot of time maintaining these web presences. So that seems to imply that if you're adding content to different pages, if you're changing the content on pages, they keep a change log and that is a quality factor. Probably in the, in the yes column, probably a good quality factor that you're maintaining it, you're keeping it up to date. Um, I've long said that, and Matt Cutts has long said, to actually put the date last updated, they like that. They're old web nerds from 1999. They like to see the last updated by somewhere on the top or the bottom of the page. So make sure you put that in there. So that's about everything I could add in for today. There was still more from that, uh, still some fairly crazy um, leaks from that. Oh, I'll do a few more. I'll do a few more. And if you if this video is too long for you, please pause now 
and come back to it tomorrow. <laughs> but I'll do a couple more just so I have them out of the way and then I can report fresh on XMX West uh, uh, next week. Okay, so the next one is just FYI, John Mueller leaked that their JavaScript processing, you wonder, if you're wondering how reliable it is, he said not all the time. So I'm getting the sense that it's maybe 50 to 60% reliable. Um, you shouldn't rely on it at all is what he mentioned. Um, so it doesn't work all the time. Also, uh, he did mention that the site navigation, and I've mentioned this before, but internal navigation and internal size is a huge ranking factor. In fact, no pun intended, the hugeness of the site is a huge ranking factor. Um, no pun intended, well, pun, actually pun fully intended. Uh, but not only the, the size of the site, the structure, the, the, the nav internal navigation hierarchy of the site. So if you don't have a good navigation hierarchy, make sure you do, and make sure it's logical, make sure it makes sense, make sure you go from root page to product page to uh, root page to product category to product page, you know, that kind of thing. And all these pages have to link up to the pages you want to rank the most, which are probably your, uh, your either your, your mid-tier or in the pyramid if you want the product pages to rank the most. All the links on the site have to link to that page, actually. Um, and uh, if those are the pages you want to rank the most. So remember, the page in your site you want to rank the most, all the internal links have to point to that. So you can sculpt your page rank, have proper internal navigation. Um, and uh, so that those, so they, so the Google knows what pages on your site are the most important. Uh, but there are certain ways to do it so that you won't get caught by Google. So if you want information about how to do that, make sure you contact myself. Um, before I forget, you can contact me at joshbashinsky at gmail.com. You can ask me any SEO question that you want. Also, you can uh, contact me at Twitter, at Josh Pashinsky, and you can watch more videos with tons more leaks like this, tons of the information I've been talking about, uh, at uh, youtube.com slash jbashins, J-B-A-C-H-Y-S. Okay, so I'll leave it uh, to that for this week. Um, next week, I'll be at uh, XMX West in California, and I'll be trying to report live for that. Um, so if you have any questions for Matt Cuts or uh, Emmett Singhal, please email me and let me know, and I'll... I'll ask them while I'm there, or at least I'll try to ask them while I'm there. They usually have 40 fanboys around them at all times. That's their method of security. They have to have um, fanboys around them. If any bullets start shooting at them, the fanboys just die off, and more fanboys jump in front of them. So um, I'll try and get around them to ask questions, but it could be difficult. So anyway, otherwise, uh, good luck in the SERPs, and we'll see you next week. And I hope the information I shared this week helps you out. All right, we'll see you next week. Bye-bye.